This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com Yom Kippur, the most glorious day of the year. Every moment is precious. Every moment is sacred. Rabbi Yisrael Salanta writes in the seventh letter, Ein lanu davar toiv mimenu. There's nothing greater than a moment of Yom Kippur that even if we could make the smallest improvement, Ein aroichla b'inyane hatevel. There is nothing in this world that could compare to it. Let me tell you what Yom Kippur means to a Jew. A yid, even in the darkest situation, in the darkest hour, cannot pull his neshama away from connecting with Yom Kippur. In the concentration camps, the biggest treasure was a piece of bread. Ay, what a person would do for a piece of bread. Even great tzaddikim, when they were dying, what could they do? They were dying of starvation. They had to prolong their life. It was permitted for them to steal a piece of bread from another yid. What could they do? And here we have the holiest day of the year. Yom Kippur arrives in the camps. My grandfather, Mordechai Leib Gladstein, Zogazunzain, he's in the most cursed place in the world. He's in Dachau. He had typhus fever. He was gravely ill. He was delirious and he had one piece of bread. Was he permitted to eat the bread? Absolutely. But it's Yom Kippur. The Yom HaKadosh. Hashem has come to us. How could he eat the bread? How could he not eat the bread? How could he? What's he going to do with the piece of bread? And let me quote to you what he writes in an article in Das Yiddish Shavart in the Yoivel edition, 1979. He writes, To keep the piece of bread to oneself, can one overcome the urge of a hunger-stricken, emaciated and tormented body? My grandfather was afraid in his delirium he might chas v'shalom take the bread. Who could he give it to? Who could he trust with his greatest treasure? People would steal bread. Who could he trust? My grandfather gave the piece of bread to his very best friend, Rabbi Avram Shazemba, a tzaddik, the nephew of the great Goin Adar of Menachem Zemba. And after the Tainus, Rabbi Avram Shazemba returns the bread to my grandfather. My grandfather takes the bread, he slices it in half, and they both broke their fast on that one piece of bread. Could my grandfather have eaten the bread? He could have. But it wasn't about whether he could or not. It was Yom Kippur. There's nothing more precious. Not even a piece of bread in the camps. Nothing more precious than a Yom Kippur. So here we are. Bask in the glory of the day. Soak up its grandeur. Take it in. Take in the majesty. Feel the Shechina. Feel the presence of Hashem. It only lasts a short while. Erev Yom Kippur. I'm sitting in the office. I'm trying to prepare this talk, the Ne'ila Drasha. And I've had a, good, a lot of good stories. I used them up already. Shabbat Shuvah, Rosh Hashanah, what do I speak about? What do I do? What do I talk about? And someone rings the bell. True story. I let him in. How could I help you? But I'm thinking to myself, what's this guy doing interrupting me? Erev Yom Kippur, it's my most important day of preparation. What does he want? He said, I came, I came to see a plaque. And I'm thinking, I don't have time to be showing plaques on Erev Yom Kippur. Whose plaque is it, I asked? It's my father's plaque. I said, do you know where it is? He says, I remember it's in the back of the shul. I haven't been here in a while. So I take him to the back of the shul. I say, sir, where are you from? I'm from North Carolina. Not a lot of Jews out in North Carolina, he says. Take him to the back of the shul. We look, look through the names. What was your father's name? Jack Goodman. I'm looking, I'm looking. I find the plaque of Jack Goodman and I'm stunned. It says, Jack Goodman. Chav Chasivan. Tav Shin Yud Zayin. Say your father passed away in 1957? 57 years ago? He said, yeah. 
My father passed away two weeks after my bar mitzvah. I was bar mitzvah in, in the shul 57 years ago. Rabbi Lax bar mitzvahed me. And then two weeks later when my father died, I put on tefillin that year. I came to the morning and evening services to say Kaddish. I said, what? When was the last time you were in the shul in Torah Semes? He said, 1961. 53 years ago. I say, sir, what brought you here today? He said, I have an aunt living out on the island. She's dying either today or tomorrow. And I said to myself, here I'm in New York. I have to go back and return to this shul where I said, Kaddish, I have to return to my father. I have to return to my father. This man came all the way from North Carolina to come back to his father. And friends, if the story would end here, it would be quite remarkable. And I, I'm not sure if I should even be telling you the second part of the story. But here it goes. The man says, Rabbi, would you mind if I would take the plaque? I said, what? 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 Let me take the plaque. He said, yeah. It's my father's. It has his name on it. Can I take it? It would mean a lot to me. And I said, look, I, I'm just the rabbi here. I'm not sure how these things work. You know, it belongs to the shul, and we turn on the light, and prayers are said on certain momentous occasions. I don't know that you could just take the plaque. He said, rabbi, be a mensch. It would mean everything in the world to me to take the plaque. So I tried to stall and push him up. I said, well, how are you going to get the plaque off the wall? It's bolted. He said, you have a screwdriver? I said, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know where there's a screwdriver. He says, how about a knife? I said, look, I can't give you a knife to remove the plaque from the wall. I'll show you where they keep the knives. And you do what you want. I don't have anything to do with this. I know nothing about it. And I take the man to the drawer. And this 70-year-old man takes the knife. He climbs onto the table. He unscrews his father's memorial plaque. And he takes the plaque. And if I could turn your attention to the back of the shul and you see that memorial plaque, every slot is taken. Except for one plaque in the middle. One empty, glaring space in the middle. Well, that space, in that space lay the plaque for Jack Goodman for the last 57 years. And this morning on Erev Yom Kippur, Erev Yom Kippur, Tav Hey. His 70-year-old son traveled a few hundred miles after 57 years to return to his father and take the plaque. I asked the man, you have a few minutes? Gave him talis, I gave him tefillin, he said, Shema, I don't know the last time this man put on talis and tefillin and said, Shema. I will never forget the incident of this man from North Carolina who at age 70 returned to his father after 57 years. Tzvi Sperber was driving in Israel when he heard on the radio an old man speaking about the kinder transport. And this man was being interviewed on the radio and he was telling the interviewer about him and a friend of his who were taken on the kinder transport to England. One day, the school they attended told the students that tomorrow they will have the opportunity to meet King George. Everyone must wear their best before meeting the king. On that day, everyone lined the streets wearing their best, each person waving their flag. As the procession slowly came by, everyone shared and waved their flag. The man on the radio who was being interviewed said, 
My friend was quite disappointed. He didn't come to watch and wave his flag. He came to speak to King George. So he decided to take the matter into his own hands and he ran and darted off to the middle of the street. He stopped the procession and he stopped the car and everyone was aghast. Unbelievably, King George rolls down his window. He has a short conversation with the boy. Everyone was flabbergasted at the boy's gall and audacity to stop the king. Two weeks later, the boys called into the principal's office. I want to talk to you about what you did the other day. What did you speak to the king about? The boy said, I thank the king for saving me from the kinder transport. But I mentioned to him that my parents are still trapped in Nazi-occupied Europe. He asked me for their names and address, and I gave it to him. Well... The principal says, the king has a present for you. The door is open, and in walks the boy's parents. The old man who was being interviewed said at the time everyone thought that my friend was insane, that he went mad, but he took advantage of the opportunity that I never took. He was reunited with his parents. I was not. The king is here now. But the gates are closing. Don't miss the opportunity to ask the king to return to your father. Gemara. Chasima Taiva. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.